welcome to another Who Dares Wins. And tonight we're very lucky to have with us another relative of somebody very famous. Jezebel! His name's Calvin. He's from Northern Ireland. Auntie Christ! And he's the son of the Reverend Ian Paisley. Here must traitor! Now, Calvin... Enemy of the stout! Is, is there some kind of problem, Calvin? No, I'm sorry. I'm just doing my warm-up exercises. Oh, I see. Well, Calvin, tell me, what do you do for a living? I am unemployed, Julia. But what is your profession? I'm a librarian. I see. Uh, Calvin, does all your family talk with such a loud voice? Well, we have to, you see, because of Mother. Oh, is she deaf? She is now. <laughs> Calvin, uh, many people would say that your father is an opinionated... I say to you here and now, <laughs> my father is not a bigot. But he is renowned for his bigotry. Oh, he's a bigot. But he's not a bugget. <laughs> a bugget's something to take to the seaside with a spear. Uh, no, no, I mean, I mean that your father is a renowned loyalist. Do you feel the same devotion to the crown? I wouldn't drink anywhere else. <laughs> Calvin, uh, do you take your religion seriously? Julia, only other week, my father and I made a special pilgrimage to the River Boyne. Oh, well, to celebrate the famous Battle of 1690. No, to watch my father walk across it. <laughs> we, oh, the men of Ulster, categorically very... maintain that as long as that oh. pianist hussy in West... <laughs> <laughs> Next week, uh, the, son of, <laughs> the son of Dylan Thomas will be talking about the new biography of his father, How Green Was My Liver. <laughs> now it's competition time. Simon Le Bon, Telly Savalas, Paul Daniels, Princess Diana and Frankie Howard. Last week we asked the question, why do all these famous personalities choose to wear a wig? And the answer is, because if they didn't, they would look like this. We also asked which historical disaster coincided with the sighting of Halley's Comet in 1066. And the answer, of course, was the birth of Barbara Cartland. <laughs> Now, what's the state of play? Is he in there? We have positive ID. Is he alone? Three others in there with him. And you're sure he hasn't spotted us? Affirmative. Okay, we go in. Call your units. Green light, go, 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 go! Something like uh, 48.6 million cubic yards. How did you know that? Oh, is that right? <laughs> How could you know that? <laughs> Just a lucky guess. Oh, look, I've finished. Your turn, darling. Yeah, do, I mean, do we have to play this stupid game? It's, it's fun. I've had 93 questions so far and I haven't got a single one right. Yeah, I know, you've been really unlucky. I'll throw for you, dear. Oh, geography. Oh, geography. Oh, right. Ah, you should get this one. It's, you know this place quite well. <laughs> what is the capital of West Germany? Oh, I know oh. this one. Bon, on. Bon, 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 bon. Are you trying to... Bon, 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 bon. Bon, bon, bon. Berlin. Bon, you stupid cow. Oh, I was supposed to know that. You lived there for six years. Yeah, but my name's just gone blank 
cancel it for God's Start sake. Start it off, Blake. Oh, you've been really unlucky. Oh, shut up. This is a very badly worded question, that. Give her another one. I don't want another Have one. Have another one, for Christ. Now, if you don't get this, you really are a moron. <laughs> what is the capital of Brazil? Oh, I know that. Brazil. Brazil. Rio de Janeiro. Brasilia. Do you think I don't know what you're up to? Humiliating me, patronising me. What? Well, don't play the innocent with me. Oh, come on, lovely. Shut up, will you? Shut up! Mm. Stop if you stop playing. You I don't want to stop playing till I get a question right. Okay. Ooh. Pick a question. <laughs> I said, pick a question. <laughs> Which category? Showbiz. What <laughs> is your favourite television programme? Read what's on the card. <laughs> what actors have played 007 James Bond on the big screen? I know this. <laughs> uh, uh, Sean Connery and yeah. um, Roger Moore. Oh, yeah. uh, Her Majesty's Secret Service. And George Lazenby. Yes, oh, yes, good yes, girl. Yes, well well done. done. Tough question. <laughs> I forgot David Niven in Casino Royale. I know I would have got that one. Shut up, you <laughs> knew it! And you all bloody knew it! Police are investigating the case of three bodies found slumped over a trivial pursuit board. <laughs> Each victim had the words David Niven carved on his forehead. <laughs> Remember, every time you sit behind the wheel of your car, you're putting yourself at risk. So don't take chances. <coughs> this man didn't wear his seatbelt. <laughs> don't end up like him. Some of you may have seen Mrs. Thatcher being interviewed by Miriam Stoppard on ITV this week. And you may have been touched, as I was, when she took out her handkerchief and wiped away a tear at the memory of the enormous personal tragedy of her father losing his seat on the council. <laughs> well, tonight on Who Dares Wins, we have an exclusive because we have that very handkerchief. <laughs> and this is the handkerchief. There's something sewn in it. Ooh. <laughs> It's a bit of raw onion. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, next week we hear that the Prime Minister will be crying again on television as she recalls the birth of her son. Apparently, it was a very difficult birth as Mark took 19 days to find his way out. <laughs> Swamp, swamp. Yeah. Clam, please. Clam. Who's that down the end? The anaesthetist. No, next to him. Oh, uh, patient's lawyer. <laughs> what? His lawyer. He did a Los Angeles brain surgeon for seven million dollars worth of negligence. We shouldn't be here. Yep, absolutely. Can we get on, please? Now, I'm going to... I'm going to make an insertion in the wall of the aorta. Right? Uh-huh. Rather you than me. <coughs> Sorry? Nothing. Sod him. I mean, so you make a mistake. Let him sue. You're only human. I'm not going to make a mistake. No, of course you're not. Of course you're not, Sir Jeffrey. No. All right, scalpel, please. If you don't mind, Sir Jeffrey, I'd rather not get involved. Only I've got a wife and a mortgage. Scalpel, please. Certainly, Sir Jeffrey. If you'll just sign this disclaimer form exempting me from liability. I don't care who's watching. This patient's life is on a thread and we're going to save him and we're going to do so regardless of any other eventualities and consequences because we are doctors, all right? Sorry, yeah, You're right, Sir Jeffrey, I'm sorry. Scalpel, please. Ah! <laughs> 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 
we've been out and about this week looking at some of the very top in entertainment currently on offer. But first, Richard Stilgo. <laughs> now, Rory's been out to see his uh, show, Richard Stilgo and Friends. Now, that's a one-man show, isn't it, Rory? Right, yeah. <laughs> and he's a, he's a marvellous entertainer, yeah. uh, Mr. Stilgo. He's very good. At one part of his show, he just comes on stage and asks the audience to shout things out. <laughs> and he makes anagrams out of anything they shout out. Really? He's very good. Yeah. He made 24 anagrams out of uh, Get Off You Smug Pratt. Really? <laughs> Of course, he's recently collaborated with Andrew Lloyd Webber, hasn't he, on uh, Starlight Express. It's a smash hit musical, a very tender love story about trains, uh, featuring some classic still-go lyrics like, Freight is great. A train feels no pain. What the heck? Give us the check. Think of that, isn't it? <laughs> he's like, Andrew Lloyd Webber's planning a sequel to Starlight Express. Really? Yeah. It's called Daylight Robbery. Uh, <laughs> but for me, I don't know if you agree, but the best part of... Lloyd Webber was without Tim, Ro Tim Rice. Tim Rice. Yeah. I mean, they had such a sort of great chemistry. Yeah. Apparently, how they used to work together, Tim would read something in the Sunday colour supplement and he'd ring up Andrew and say, hey, Andy, let's do a musical about Argentina, chess, joining a book club. Yeah. <laughs> and then Andrew would say, brilliant, I'll go and dig out some old bits of Puccini. And that was it. Yeah. <laughs> well, finally, films. And I've been to see the latest episode in the Porky series of films. And in this romp, our young sex-mad heroes finally catch the clap. <laughs> that opens next Thursday, and it's called Pork Scratchings. <laughs> If a man you've never met before stops you in the street and gives you flowers, run like hell. <laughs> How long have we been working on this agreement now? Oh, 19 hours. Oh, God. Where's Reagan? Oh, he's upstairs helping Gorbachev to fix that big red mark off the top of his head. <laughs> oh, God. I tell you one thing I've always wondered. Mm. When the Big Bang actually comes, which city are you guys gonna nuke first, huh? Stuck on Trent. Yeah, it's number one on our list, too. <laughs> but Stuck on Trent is on your side. Why should you wish to bomb Stoke? You ever been there? <laughs> no one will know whose missiles are whose anyway. I don't suppose you guys are uh, gonna be hitting Springfield, Illinois, are you? No plans to. Why? No reason. It's just my ex-wife lives there. Uh, Springfield, Illinois it is then, but it will cost you two pairs of Levi's and a promise to wipe out Murmansk. Why Murmansk? I got stuck in a meat queue in Murmansk for six hours. <laughs> Add Braxville, Texas to your list. I caught a dose there twice. And Omsk! You must flatten Omsk! My car broke down there and I knocked on someone's door and they wouldn't leave and even let me uh, use their telephone. 14 Uzbeki Prospect, the Bulgarovs. Give them one for me, okay? It's a deal. It's a deal, buddy. As long as you tell me which strategic targets you're gonna be hitting. Uh, Nevada, huh? Greenham, mm -hmm. Molesworth, mm -hmm. Geneva. Geneva? There are no missiles here in Geneva. No, but there are Swiss in Geneva, bloody rip-off merchants. <laughs> 48 francs for a glass of scotch in the hotel bar. And when you buy a pound of cheese, you get half a pound of holes. Right. Let's it then, the Swiss. That'll teach them to stay neutral last time around. <laughs> and, and the, the Swedes. Swedes. We don't believe that war can achieve anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, back to work. Uh, after Frank and lively discussion, lots mm -hmm. of hard ahead, etc. Mm -hmm. We, in a spirit of mutual cooperation, agreed to bugger all. Thank you. Now it's time for Who Dares Wins Job Spot. And we've got some very interesting vacancies this week. Here's one. Light duties, short hours, only 20 minutes a week would suit a handicapped person. 
And that's a uh, centre forward for Arsenal. <laughs> And this job has no lunch breaks and no pension scheme and no perks and no wages and it's working for Liverpool Council. <laughs> Here's one for a senior citizen. It's a job as a High Court judge. The period of employment is from the age of 65 until death. And then as long as you like after that. <laughs> and this is the living, living room. Yes, that's right. Oh, it's, it's cold in here. Yes, once the central heating's turned on, I'm sure it'll be... No, no, not, not, not cold in temperature, but cold. Ah. Almost evil, as, as if the place is haunted. H hunted? No, you're but it's hunted. Hunted high and low. These, these properties are very, very hard to come by, you see. I, I, f I feel as if there's a presence. My wife is psychic. Is she? I'm very excited, I didn't realise. Oh, Aren't psychics the one that wear the turbans, do all the, do all the bending? Is, the... Has this place a, a, a terrible and macabre history? Uh, well, I don't... Uh... Something foul's happened here. I beg your pardon, I'll open the window. <laughs> this is an unhappy house. Well, I'm sure with a, with a lick of paint and a, a bit of polyfur, you'll have the place looking nice and cosy. Oh, we're, we're not alone here. Ah. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Butterfingers me. <laughs> but, but, but you were over there. Uh, well, that's how clumsy I am. <laughs> oh, my God, what's, what's that? No, what? Oh, it's bleeding! It's bleeding! It's wall bleed. Yes. <laughs> wall bleed? Yes, uh, a, a lot of these Victorian properties are prone to it. Uh, what, what are what? you going to do about it? Uh, well, stick a, stick a bit of toilet paper on it. Oh, my God. There's somebody upstairs. Uh, uh, that's next door. It's the bloke next door. He's a ventriloquist. But it's coming from upstairs. I know, he's very good, isn't he? But it's footsteps. Uh, well, he's not that good. He's, he, 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 he can't throw his voice, only his footsteps. It's a novelty act. Stop that! Oh, my God. Oh, God. <laughs> this place is haunted. <laughs> He's possessed! Uh, well, uh, the council did try to repossess it once, but uh, <laughs> in vain. Rising damp. Shall we um shall we have a look in the uh, in the kitchen, baby? Uh, uh, maybe, maybe not! Maybe not! What, what was that? Nothing, nothing at all! Oh look! Haley's comet! Look, you bloody escape psychopath! Bugger off! <coughs> Go on! I'll never sell this bloody house now. Oh, you're going to have to drop the price a couple of grand, Mr. Cousins. <laughs> As you join us here at Silverstone for the last race in the Grand Prix calendar, the news is that there's been a light shower of rain and an oil speed on the track, which could mean a catastrophic pileup at any moment. Let's hope so, anyway. <laughs> I mean, they've been at it for a good 15 minutes now, and there hasn't been one accident, not a single shunt. Boring, boring, boring. <laughs> I'll see more skids and a pair of underpants. <laughs> Look at them. Round and round, up and down. God, this is as boring as watching bloody Barry took Sipper over those viewers' letters. Come on, one of you, crash! Oh, and Nigel Mansell has... Oh, no, he hasn't. He's all right. Damn. And so round they go again. Anu, Prost, Senna, tedious continentals. Sound like so many brands of disinfectant. Well, that's it. I've had enough of this. Join me later for some real excitement. Live from that dodgy contraflow at Junction 13 on the M1. <laughs> Later on, we'll be asking, if Bob Geldof is such a humanitarian, why did he call his daughter Fifi Trixie Bell? <laughs> With me is Dr Sven Johansson, the director of the Swedish Institute for Atmospheric Studies. Hello. Hello. Now, I understand that one of your main concerns is acid rain. Yes, that is so. Would you like to tell us about it? Well, what happens is that the high concentrations of the sulfur oxide yeah. are released in the upper atmosphere by the burning of the fossil fuels here in Britain, and the prevailing winds blow this over, and it falls as acid rain on the forests of Scandinavia. I see. So what you're saying is that we produce this, the substance in this country, uh, but it destroys the forests over there in Sweden. Exactly. 
<laughs> um, but uh, it's not only us in Sweden who suffer. No. Also, a lot of the acid rain falls on the Germans. <laughs> Let me get this straight. We, we do all the burning over here, right? <laughs> but it doesn't affect us at all. And you get the lot. All right. <laughs> You and the Krauts. Yeah. <laughs> and the Finn. <laughs> Still, I mean, look on the bright side. I mean, if all your forests die out, you'll have nothing to make that bloody awful crisp bread out of, will you? <laughs> George Chalmers is chief constable for Wearside and a man with progressive ideas. I know a lot of my fellow chief constables regard me as, well, a bit newfangled, a bit radical, but I do feel that the community has an important role to play, and I'm very pleased that our local magistrates have agreed to be more flexible in their approach, because I've always felt you can't just go on sticking people in prison as a punishment. There's got to be an alternative, more imaginative approach, and I think we've found it. It means local people feel involved, especially our more elderly citizens. Oh, he's fine. And Mrs. Braithwaite's taking care of it. You see, with the help of local bodies, like the church, we've built a community approach that doesn't cost the ratepayers a penny. Oh, thanks. It's simple, it's efficient, and perhaps most important, highly enjoyable. <laughs> I suppose our most progressive innovation has been the youth punishment scheme, whereby young offenders are given a good physical workout to siphon off their aggression. My ideas aren't particularly new. Just a simple copper, really. But I do believe they're given the right sort of short, sharp shock, then people won't do it again. I think that makes sense. <laughs> Now it's time for Word of the Week, and uh, this week's Word of the Week is Russell Grant. <laughs> Russell Grant. And a Russell Grant is the medical term for an attack of violent nausea <laughs> caused by a large lump of fatty tissue, <laughs> which makes you throw up over your cornflakes. I'll be glad to see the back of this womb. Yeah. I've got to get out of here. You can't. You haven't got all your bits yet. <laughs> you're, still, you're still waiting on your ears. Pardon? There you are, see? <laughs> Bored. Yeah. Are we alive yet? Hey. Eh? Well, I mean, it's an interesting point, isn't it? I mean, when does life begin? Life begins at 40. <coughs> I, heard, I heard one of them say it outside. Oof, we've got a bloody long wait then, haven't we? I know, we've got a huge, aren't we? Yeah. I mean, we'll never get out of that hole down there, will we? Come on, come on. Mind you, it's amazing how quickly we're developing, really. Yeah, it's true. I mean, only last week you were a hideous, jelly-like substance of... Yeah, all right, all right, we get the general idea, yeah, all right. Oh, what? God, we're at the clinic again. Is that bloody scanner? Shut up! <laughs> Hang on, I'll have a listen to what's going on. Oh. God, God. Hang on. What? The student's gonna have a go. Quick! No. Hide me, hide me! <laughs> <laughs> this will bugger him up. <laughs> Hang on. What's happening? He's saying, one of them's disappeared. <laughs> he's saying, he's saying you must have eaten me. <laughs> Oi! Oi, are you pushing? Oi! Oi! Look at, all, look at all this groping. If she'd had the stuff for private, wouldn't have all this bloody groping. What's private? Private? Oh, it's, it's, it's Arabic for queue jumping. Oh. Ah, <laughs> uh, you see, if you'd gone private, you'd meet a much better class of person in the uh, incubators, you see? Yeah. Make all your good contacts early on. Yeah. And then when no one's looking, you swap the ID tags around and you might end up the Sultan of Kuwait. Oh, yeah. No? What's that? What? 
Oh, she's crying again. Oh, morbid old cow. Prenatal depression, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> she's saying it's a terrible world to bring children into. Uh, oh, dear, all the drink and the drugs and the permissive sex. Doesn't sound too bad. Sounds terrific. <laughs> Oh, 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 God! Oh, earthquake! Oh, oh, no! The chicken biryani she had last night. Right. I wish she wouldn't go Indian, you know. Hang on. What? Oh, the doctor's concerned about us. <laughs> oh, he's going to send up one of those bloody cameras again. Oh, jeez. Camera? Yeah. How do I look? You look fine. How do I look? Oh, great, great. Right, hang on. Here it comes. Oh. Right. Here we go. Ready? Yeah. OK, here we go. <laughs> I'm looking for a real mean cat and he's gonna get his dues He's the man with the master plan to give us all blues Who is that man? Who is that man? Designed the one pound coin that makes holes in every pocket. I'd like to kick him in the groin. He is the man who invented nylon sheets that give off electric shocks. He sneaks into the laundrette and steals one of your socks. Who is that man? He is the guy who puts that drawing pen in your shoes. He puts pagans in your lager can. He's a girlfriend and it's you. Got him at that. The monster, his evil mind devised those little things with milk in that squirted in your eyes. He gave Jeffrey Archer his first pen, I gave the busker his guitar. This guy lurks in high rise car parks, but while you're gone, he moves your car. I hate that man. At night time, he's the devil. It's not cats that raid your bin, it's not some Greek who rings at 3 a.m. You can bet your life it's him. What's he doing? Inventing bloody car alarms that go throughout the night. Just who is this man? Puts the yap in Pekinese dogs. He glues the lids on childproof bottles. Steals the loo rolls from our bars. Who is this man? What have we done to him? Why must we live in fear? We gotta stop him. Stop him now before he has his next idea. Who is that man? all this time. Free! Free at last! Well, he got his divorce. <laughs> Our turn next. I've been having second thoughts. Yes? I've changed my mind. Go on, say it. I think I should keep the fridge. I keep the fridge? Call the first witness, Warden Johnston. Warden Johnston. Yeah, here. My friend. <laughs> Oh. Right, Mandy. Well, about this man. You see, they will ask you in court about him, about how he exposed himself to you. And one question they're bound to ask you is, um, well, uh, did he show you his, um, his, uh, well, his thingy? His what? His, uh, little man? His winkle? His tinkle? 
His purple lollipop. Oh, <laughs> Graham, get someone to park the Porsche for me, will you? Mr. James, Mr. James, please. Mr. James. Uh, Jones? Yeah, uh, yes, that's right, Jones. Now, you've had your ear bitten off. Well, it looks pretty cut and dried. I think we're talking uh, a six figure compensation, Sal, here. Uh, no, I bit his ear off. Please, Mr. James, leave the legal technicalities to me, OK? Warden <laughs> Evans. We're calling Warden Evans. Over here. Yeah, just uh, follow the sound of my voice, mate. Over here. All right. Tommy, what happened? We had something. Something wonderful. Something marvellous. What happened to that? You spent it all. <laughs> now, Mandy, concentrate. Did he dangle his dingle? <laughs> Did he parade his python? Did he wave hello with his old yo-yo? Now then, Mr. Um, Thingy. Uh, yeah. Yes, I'll accept a call from Argentina. Sorry, it's Clive. Uh, hello. Yes. Yes. Uh, hello, Senor Lopez. Uh, Senor Borman. Yes. <laughs> yes. Sieg Heil to you too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, I'm still working on your defence. I'm going to argue you weren't responsible for your actions due to premenstrual tension. Yeah. Call Lord Lucan. <laughs> no, they, they, they want Exhibit A. Did he call the cucumber? Uh, did he uh, lop out the one-eyed lodger? <laughs> ah, Exhibit A. Exhibit A. That's it, yeah, straight in there. <laughs> what happened to us? What went wrong? Why did it have to end? Why, why, why? I can't stand women who keep asking rhetorical questions. Why do I keep doing that? What's wrong with me? Yeah, OK. Yeah, bye. Sorry about that. Now, the, uh, the Rosers are saying that they've found the victim's ear under your pillow. How do you account for that? The tooth fairy brought it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think I can swing that. Calling Lord Lucan. Lord Lucan. Well, still. It's worth a try, you never know, do you? <laughs> Waggle his woggle. Proffer his pinky. <laughs> oh, another thing, I keep sabre. Oh, no, come off it. I paid his licence fee and his fouling the footpath fine. She's never felt for him emotionally. Oh, just give us a... Yeah, I, I, I shall argue, brilliantly, of course, that uh, when this gentleman's ear came away in your mouth, did he plonk out his pork sword? Yeah. <laughs> that your responsibility was diminished due to your being of subnormal intelligence. You are of subnormal intelligence, aren't you? I think so. <laughs> What's your favourite pop group? Marillion. Case proven. <laughs> PC Harrison, PC Harrison. Yeah, I'm going to put <laughs> Bent copper. <laughs> I must warn you, you're up before a very severe judge. Oh, hey, he's launched, he's launched in, in a right bloody speaker in the day, mate. Oh, what? What did that bloke do wrong? He's the court stenographer. <laughs> he made a typing error. <laughs> oh, no. Did he flourish the old fella? <laughs> did he, um... Did he brandish Mr. Big, the bouncy boa constrictor? <laughs> Did he waggle Mr. Wibbly, the wobbly worm? <laughs> now, this man who attacked your mouth with his ear, when... when he engaged you in conversation, did he know that you were a Chelsea supporter? Yeah. Then we've got him. Contributory negligence. <laughs> right. Now all we need to discuss is my fee. Oh, I'm, uh, legal aid. I hope you get life. <laughs> did Percy pop up for tea? Come on, did the phallic phoenix rise from its ashes? Did Zebedee take a peek through the trouser-shaped window? Or for God's sake, did he show you his penis? <gasps> <laughs> no. No? No, he just took his cock out. Mr. and Mrs. Osgood, Mrs. and Mrs. <laughs> Would you just go through there, please, and start to slag each other off? Thank you very Thank you. much. Okay, right. <laughs> right. He's next. Make sure he doesn't make a run for it, eh? Put him. <laughs> here, you! Here! <laughs>